In my video on how I added Jarvis to my smart home, one of the things I talked about was my washer notification. And quite a few people wanted to know more information on how that was set up. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I set up my washer notifications. But before we get to the notification piece, we need to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. Almost all of my automations were built to solve a problem. And in this case, the problem was sometimes we would forget to move the clothes from the washer to the dryer. The most common reason was we just didn't hear the chime when the washer finished, or we had left the house while it finished, and when we returned, just got busy doing other things. So I decided to use Home Assistant to remind us until we actually move the clothes from the washer to the dryer. If you missed the video on how I added Jarvis to my smart home, the washer notification sounds like this. I do not mean to interrupt, but it has been four hours since the washer finished its cycle. Do you like your clothes smelling like mildew? Because that is what is happening right now. You don't have to use text-to-speech though for this notification. You could send a text message or have it push a notification to the mobile phone app or even just play a song. But before we can even get to the notification part, Home Assistant needs to be aware of what's going on with the washer. Specifically, it needs to know when the washer has run and whether we've moved the clothes from the washer. If you have a smart washing machine, you may already have this set up with Home Assistant. But since I have a dumb washer, I'm using a power metering switch and a contact sensor on the door. And even though this is focused on my washing machine, you could apply these same techniques to other major appliances. So let's jump in. First up, I needed a washer status sensor in Home Assistant. And that sensor needed to be able to tell me whether the washer was idle, whether it was currently running, or whether it had completed its cycle. This is the sensor I based all of the automations off of. And in my setup, I leveraged an MQTT sensor. To use MQTT, you of course need an MQTT server. MQTT is a message platform meant to help disparate services communicate. The way it works is a service could publish a message on a specific topic. Then any other services that wanted to know the message or wanted to be kept in sync with what was going on could just subscribe to that topic. If MQTT is something you wanna get set up on your system, there's a link in the description that takes you to a video where I walk you through how to set that up. And once you have MQTT integrated with your home assistant, you just need to set up a sensor using the platform MQTT. Then all you do is define a name for that sensor and define a topic where the data for that sensor will live. You of course can get way more complicated than this with your MQTT sensors, but since this is just a status sensor, I'm gonna keep it simple. And while MQTT makes it easier to connect other services and even devices to Home Assistant, you don't need MQTT for this setup. You could use a select helper with the options of idle, running, and complete. An input Boolean might work as well, I would just look for an option that allows you to manually update it if possible, because there will be times that you need to manually update this sensor. Once I had my sensor set up in Home Assistant, it was time to add the power meter to my washing machine. The one I'm using is of course a switch, which never gets turned off. I'm just using the power metering sensors that are built in. This one gives me a couple of different sensors, but the one I'm focused on is the current power usage. I'm not sure if they make this particular switch anymore, but in any case, I found a Zoos power metering switch on Amazon. And if you have a gas dryer, it would work for that as well. It just won't work for an electric dryer. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description to that plug in case you want it. This of course isn't the only option here, but if you want something easy, you're probably looking for a Z-Wave, Zigbee, or Wi-Fi off the shelf solution. And of course, DIY is always an option. Just make sure whatever solution you decide to go with can handle the power of your appliance. If you don't want to deal with a power metering switch or sensor, you could always try a vibration sensor. Home Assistant just needs some way of knowing that the washing machine is running so that it can tell you when it's stopped. Next, you're going to need a contact sensor that you can put on the door of your washing machine. I'm using a Z-Wave contact sensor made by Echolink, but a Zigbee or Wi-Fi one would work as well. I'll leave some affiliate links in the description of this video to some options on Amazon. The bottom line here is you just need to wait and know when the door has been opened so that you can tell when the clothes have been emptied. I'm not going to get into the specifics of integrating these specific devices into Home Assistant because based on which devices you choose, that path could be different. But in any case, once Home Assistant is aware that the washer has been running, 
and whether or not you've emptied the clothes, it's time to automate all of this. So let's look at some YAML. The first automation in this process is called washer running. The purpose of this automation is to set the value of our washer status sensor to running. So trigger is when the watts are above five, and the entity ID is our power meter sensor. Platform is numeric state. You may be asking why five and not zero here. I started with zero, but after watching the sensor found that when the washer is powered on, it pulls more than zero watts and less than five. Which meant if someone just turned on the washing machine then decided not to run it, Home Assistant would have triggered this automation if the trigger had been left at zero. So I decided if it pulled more than five, it was definitely running. Your machine may be different, so you may have to play around with this trigger. Next, we have some conditions, and we're using the OR condition since we want to fire this automation anytime the current value of the sensor is idle or complete. This means that if for some reason the washer status was complete and we just reran the load, then the status would change back to running. I have this here, so if for some reason the status got out of sync, it resets itself. Then for action, we update the value of our sensor. Since I'm using MQTT, I just publish the payload running to my topic, and we set the retain flag to true. In MQTT, this means that this value is going to persist until it's changed. Next up is the automation that triggers when the washer has finished the cycle. The aptly named washer complete automation updates the status sensor to reflect the washer status is now complete. Here, the trigger is when the power sensor drops below three watts. Again, the value of three took some trial and error since during the cycle, the power load is all over the place. But I found that once it was below three, it never spiked back up. We have a condition here to make sure it only fires when the current sensor value is running. So this status sensor can't jump from idle to complete unless we manually do that. Again, one of those small protections to make sure the automation stays in its lane. And for action, we publish the value complete to our sensor topic. Again, we want to retain that status, so we set the retain to true. And next, we update the washer last complete sensor with the time when the script runs. This sensor currently isn't used, but I had eventually planned on using it to get an average time between complete and empty so I could adjust my notification loop. But I just haven't finished that piece, and really, it's not needed for this. Now, we finally get to the notification part. This automation is called washer notification, and it's what tells Home Assistant to nag the house until someone remembers to move the clothes. Here, we leverage the washer status as our trigger, so anytime it goes from running to complete, we want to kick off this notification. This also brings us up to the first of some changes I made for this video. This commented out service call is how the script normally works, but since I haven't done a video detailing how my general notification script, this status underscore ANNC works, I wanted to simplify things. I hope to have that video out before the end of the year, but it may be into next year before I actually get it done. Anyway, the service call here where we call script.speechengine is essentially doing the same thing. I'm not going to get into the speech engine script, but it is my text-to-speech traffic controller. If you want details on how that works, check out the link in the description to my Jarvis video. Speech Engine takes two parameters, who, which is where it should play the message, and message, which is the actual message we want to convert to speech. In this case, I'm using my homegrown room presence sensor, albeit an updated one from my Jarvis video, to get the speaker we should use, so I know where to play the message, and a message. This message is meant to play right as the washing machine has completed its cycle, just in case we're in part of the house where we can't hear the chime from the washing machine. Then we turn on the washer finish notification audible script. This script handles the reoccurring notification. There isn't much to this script. It uses the repeat service and it will repeat as long as the washer status sensor is set to complete. Then it delays for 45 minutes. This delay is because the first time this starts, it would have just announced the washer was empty. But after 45 minutes, it calls the washer audible script, which handles the actual notification. You might be able to do this in the automation, but honestly, I have had consistency issues with loops and automations. So if I'm going to loop some actions, I always use a script. But if you wanted to try it yourself and reduce some of the parts to this, it should work in theory. Again, in order to simplify things, I created a simplified version of the actual script I use just to reduce some complexity. The simplified washer audible script checks a couple of conditions. First, it makes sure that the family is home. Second, it makes sure that the washer status is still complete. 
These two conditions ensure that the announcement only goes off if we're home and the washer hasn't been emptied. So if we're not home, nothing happens at this point. And you may be wondering why the sensor check again since we just started this. Well, the 45 minute delay means that in the repeat loop, we may have emptied the washer. So I didn't want this firing again if that was the case. And I can have other automations call this script directly anytime I want. And if the washer needs to be emptied, I get a message without having to wait for that 45 minute delay. All of this is part of me trying to keep things modular which as you can see, adds a lot of complexity, but I do think it extends the use of these notifications. Anyway, if both conditions are true, we call the speech engine script. We set the who parameter to the speaker we want to use, and then we build our message. This first part provides a randomized interruption. This is just a list of phrases I wanna start this notification with, and this pipe random at the end means that we pick just one. Then we state that the washing machine has completed its cycle and do some quick math. First, we need to know how many seconds have elapsed since the washing machine completed its cycle. So this bit of Jinja tells Home Assistant to create a variable named seconds and set the value to the current timestamp minus the timestamp stored in the last changed attribute of our washer status sensor. Unfortunately, I don't know a better way to get to this attribute, but it should never be null, so this should work. If it is null, then your status sensor has never updated, which might be a bigger issue. Then we use an if else statement as a decision tree. For the most part, we don't care about the minutes, so they're the last thing we look at in this decision tree. If the time elapsed is one hour, then this tells us that it's been one hour and randomly picks one of these lines. If it was more than an hour and less than six, it notes the hours passed and then picks one of these lines. If it was over six hours, we note the hours and pick one of these. And if no hours have passed, we note the minutes and pick one of these. This is all split up like this so that the announcements could get more snarky the more time has passed. And after that, the repeat loop in our washer finished audible notification script continues until it's emptied. But the last automation turns all of this off. So when the washer door opens, we trigger the washer emptied automation. For actions, we publish that the washer status is now idle. We turn off the washer finished notification audible script, and we publish the current timestamp to note when it was emptied. Again, this sensor is meant for something I haven't implemented yet, so you don't really need it. Since the notification won't play if we're not at home, we wanna get that notification as soon as we return home. And anytime we arrive home, I have a family is home script that fires. One of its actions is to kick off the welcome briefing. This briefing gives a rundown of the current systems on like the HVAC and what their settings are and lets us know what happened while we're gone. One of the actions is to let us know whether the washer needs to be emptied. This one is technically not needed since the washer notification is still on its every 45 minute loop. But I wanted an immediate reminder when we returned home. And I think that about does it for my washer notification walkthrough. The hardest part is probably getting all of the thresholds right so that Home Assistant knows that your dumb washer was actually running. If you have a smart washer, that probably is a whole lot easier. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this video. If you want to support Slacker Labs and our mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you'll find a link to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store in the description of this video, where you can get some of the very t-shirts I wear in these videos. I mean, not the actual t-shirts, I'm saving those for when I start an OnlyFans page but you can get a t-shirt printed on demand specifically for you. Or you can support Slacker Labs by using the affiliate links in the description, which provides a small commission to me at no cost to you. Or just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button. And consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. If you have ideas for future videos you would like me to do, drop those in the comments. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your smart home projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.